Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, I'm simply going to be walking you through three different GCSE electricity questions, guys. And I know loads of kids struggle in this year upon year on other teacher subjects because you've got to combine how current behaves in the circuit, how voltage behaves in the circuit, and Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, all together here. If you're struggling on those things, and if you have no idea what I just said, check out my videos in the description because it will teach you what the different rules are for current, uh, for voltage in a circuit, and for Ohm's law. Check out those videos out before watching this because now we're going to apply, take all our knowledge from that and apply it to questions and solve them. Right, okay, so here are the three questions. Here's the first one. Number one, worked example. Right, okay, so here we have a circuit. We've got 9 volts over here, 0.5 amps over there. We've got a resistor of 8 ohms, and we've got uh, uh, an unknown uh, resistor here, X. And you've got a voltmeter around this resistor over here. Uh, first one, calculate the potential difference across the 8 ohm resistor. Calculate the potential difference across the 8 ohm resistor. Right, hopefully you remember that voltage is equal to current times by the resistance because it's a fixed resistor, therefore we can use Ohm's Law's equation. Therefore, to work this out, V is equal to I times by R. Right, so do I know the current which is going to be represented by I? Yes, it's 0.5. So V is equal to 0.5. The resistance is 8. Yes, because R stands for the resistance. It's going to be 8. So yes, the voltage across here is going to be 4 volts. Easy stuff. B, then calculate the voltage over resistor X and its resistance. So what is the voltage across this resistor then? Well, now we've got to use the voltage rule in this circuit. You know 9 volts comes in, and I've dropped off 4 volts here. So obviously, in one loop, yes, don't forget, in one loop, the total voltage in is equal to the total voltage out. So 9 volts over here, 4 over here, this one. Before you go back in the loop, you must drop off the whole 9 volts. So 9, this is 4 volts over here. This one will be 5 volts over here. So 4 volts there. 5 volts and returning back over here. So yes, the voltage across resistor X is going to be 5 volts. What about the resistance, the resistance of it? Well, we can use the Ohm's law formula again. You want to work at the resistance, V is equal to I times by R. So therefore, R is equal to the voltage, which we know now is going to be 5 volts. Yes, divided by the current. So actually, let me just rearrange that very slowly. So it's going to be equal to V divided by I. The value of the voltage is going to be equal to, uh, so 5 volts divided by, and the current is still the same because it's a series circuit. So the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit, divided by 0.5 over here. So 5 divided by 0.5 is equal to 10 ohms over here. So it's going to be 10 ohms over here. Excellent stuff. Okay, so make sure you've had a go at doing that, guys, and make sure you understand how the voltage behaves in the loop over here. Right, next question. Right, next question. A circuit was set up as shown in a diagram over here. There we go, we've got the circuit over here. Each cell provides a potential difference of 1.5 volts. What is the total potential difference provided by the four cells in the circuit? So each one of the cells, don't forget this is one cell, if we know that's going to be 1.5 volts, you've got one, two, three, four. Well, how much will there be? Well, obviously it's going to be four times by 1.5, four times by 1.5, it's going to be six volts coming in. So that is going to be six volts. So it's six volts over here. Excellent, so we now know that's six volts. Next question. What potential difference is dropped over the 60 ohm resistor? 60 ohm resistor here. Right, so don't forget the voltage rule. In each loop, so this is one loop, the voltage is conserved, it is the same. So this is one loop, and this is my other loop all the way back around again. So look, in the first one, six volts come in. I've got one place to drop it off. This one must be six volts here, and it goes back. Second loop, I pick up six volts, and I come across here. This one will be six volts as well. Right, loads of kids usually think that's three and three. No, it's six volts and six volts here. So the potential difference dropped across the 60 ohm resistor is going to be six volts over here. C, what is the current reading on the ammeter A? What is the current reading on this ammeter A? Well, hopefully you can see that the current here, don't forget, it enters, it splits at the junction, and then they both go down, and look, they recombine over here at this junction to become A. So the current over here was 0.2, yes, 0.2 amps is going through there, 0.2. The current through here is going to be 0.1 amps. They both combine together to make 0.3. 
Don't forget the current at the junction. Yes, the total current going into the junction is equal to the total current coming out. So 0.2 plus the 0.1 makes it 0.3 over here. So the current reading on ammeter A, this is going to be 0.3 A amps. Uh, next one, what is the resistance of the bulb? Right, so I want to work at the resistance of the bulb. I can use the following formula. V is equal to I times by R. Therefore, R is equal to V divided by I. The value of the voltage of the bulb is going to be 6 volts. Uh, the current in the bulb is going to be 0 0.2. So 6 divided by 0 0.2, it's going to be equal to 30 ohms. So this one is going to be 30 ohms over here. This one's 30 ohms. And now that should make sense. Because look, I can get... Um, a higher amount of current going through less resistance here. And look, I have a lower amount of current going through the more resistance here. Because obviously, the higher the resistance is on the branch, the lower the current will be. And as you can see over here, there's lower resistance. I can get higher current coming out of here. Excellent stuff. Okay, so now we've done this. Let's do one more. Question four. When all four heating elements are switched on at full power, the hob draws a current of 36 amps from 200 volt main supply. Calculate the resistance of one heating element when the hob is switched on at full power. Give your answer to 2SF. Right, so over here I've got 230 volts going in, yes, from the main supply. And therefore, don't forget, loop by loop, the voltage must remain the same. So look, this is one loop over here, going all the way back around again. So if it's 230 volts, I must be dropping off 230 volts across there. And then going back again, so the, all of them are 230 volts, 230 volts, 230 volts over here. Um, the hob draws a current of 36 amps, so it's taking 36 amps over here. But look, the current will enter the junction, and look, there's four paths. So we're going to divide it by four, so 36 divided by four, it's going to be nine. So each one of them gets nine amps over here. There we go. Right, so each one of them gets nine amps. So finally, if I want to work at the resistance, the, we can use V is equal to I times by R. The resistance, don't forget, is therefore equal to um, the voltage divided by the current. We know the voltage, obviously, between each one is 230 volts between each uh, heater. The current, don't forget, the 36 splits into 4 into 9 amps, so 230 volts divided by the 9 amps, so 230 volts divided by the 9 amps, I'm going to get 25.56 um, ohms over here. There we go. But obviously to 2SF, it's going to be 26 ohms. Wonderful stuff. Right, and if you're still struggling, guys, comment below, uh, and I'll try and explain it again. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video, and I'll help you with your studies. Take care, guys, and goodbye.